It is so quiet out here. All I hear are birds and the bees just like buzzing into flowers. Hi, my name is Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. I am gardening in South Carolina zone 7B and today I'm going to give you guys a garden tour. If you're new to the channel, I do this every single Wednesday so that you guys can keep track of how things are actually progressing in the garden. I know over the summer a lot of gardeners will do garden tours and I like to do garden tours all throughout the winter as well so that you guys get a good idea of not only what things look like during peak season when it's all beautiful and easy to show off but also what it looks like coming up to that peak season and then after that peak season so that you can develop really realistic expectations for your own garden. Right now is the time of planting in my area. It is about to be the middle of May and it is warming up and I'm starting to put stuff out in the garden. So last week I showed you guys some of the peppers I put out and we are going to check in on those as well as talk about some of the new things I have planted and all this stuff that I still have to plant. Here's Kida hanging out in the garden with me. No matter where I go in the garden she wants to be sitting right near what I'm doing. And that's really cute and all but sometimes she'll come up to where I'm working and she will sit directly on the plant that I just planted and I'm like come on but overall she's pretty good about not bothering the plants you're a sweet little girl yeah thank you So we're gonna go ahead and start where we always do on this right side of the garden along this trellis. I have fava beans and onions and man, my onions are starting to look like real onions down here. Um, it's crazy. I'll show you guys some of the even bigger ones over in the next row. Um, and as far as fava beans go, it is starting to get a little warm for them. You can see some of them are not looking as great. I think I have two different varieties here and I'm expecting one of them is not as heat tolerant as the other because I do have some that are larger and are still looking just fine. Um, however, you will see as a recurring theme in my videos that I am really bad about labeling stuff. I am always like, oh well, I'll remember or yeah, I mean, yeah, that doesn't happen. So I know I planted two different varieties of fava beans, but I have no idea which ones are which and no way to tell the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save seeds off of the ones that look better and then keep on with planting those because those are obviously the ones that work really well for my space and my climate and all of that. I have decided to let the rest of these fava beans dry out on the plant so that I can have maybe one big batch to uh, dry and store and do something with because although this looks like a lot of fava beans, it's actually not just a whole ton in the grand scheme of things when you're talking about going from that big pod all the way to just the beans inside and I mean some of these pods are getting pretty massive but as you can see like this pod for example has one two big beans in it and that is it and you'll have to take them out of the pods and then there's an inner shell that you strip off of them especially if you've dried them and so the amount of actual food that I'm getting is not super high and so you might ask yourself, well, if you don't have the space to plant as many as would be necessary for a lot of food, then why are you bothering at all? And the reason is that fava beans, being in the legume family, are also nitrogen fixers. And so they are actually, in addition to providing me food, preparing the space for the tomatoes, which are going to go in very shortly. And sort of an um, unplanned experiment over here, this bit of the fava plant fell over and I did not get a chance to tie it up to the trellis. And in the process, it knocked over some of these onions. And some people will tell you, if you knock over an onion, that's a good way to get it to bulb faster and sooner. And so we can kind of watch how these go and compare them to some of the onions nearby that did not get knocked over and like just evaluate what the difference is. Alright, so if we come down to these next two rows over here, this is onions and garlic and I've kind of started treating it all like one big row because everything got planted so close together there wasn't really any point in making a walkway through here. But anyway, onions, some of these are starting to get absolutely 
massive like just look at that that is that is a decent sized onion as it is and it is still actively growing so i'm pretty excited about this year's onion harvest um and of course the garlic i gotta show you guys let's see one of these over here yeah you see this one is starting to die back these lower leaves this is a good indication that it is actively getting ready to uh, bulb up and so if we dig down around the base we can kind of take a peek at what that bulb is looking like and that is i don't know if you guys can see on camera that is starting to look massive as well at least for a garlic so the peppers that i planted here last week i have added as many cages as i have to them obviously i'm still missing some cages but last year i did not cage my peppers and i regretted that quite a bit because peppers if you have a long growing season can get really quite large and then when they have heavy peppers hanging off of them they tend to flop onto the ground um, and so these cages are mostly just to give them a little bit of support and keep them growing up off, off, the, up, off the ground. And you can see I sort of have places that, when, like once this onion comes out, this area will be somewhat empty. And so this is going to be a good place for me to stick a basil plant. I'm going to have so many basil plants coming up. Um, I haven't noticed that any of my transplanted peppers have died. Um, and these ones that were larger are obviously recovering from the transplant a little bit faster. But so far, everybody looks really good. And I am trying to decide if I'm going to go out and buy more cages for these or not. These are all hot peppers. And so their peppers are going to be smaller and the chance of them flopping on the ground is going to be a lot lower. Also, I've got to show you guys. I don't know if I've shown you guys my fish peppers this year. These are variegated and gorgeous and the peppers are also going to come out variegated. You can see that these plants are getting chewed on a little bit in places. Um, so far I'm not incredibly worried about that. I think once the roots get settled it will start taking off and easily outgrow any pest that is chewing on it. Um, but it just kind of looks a little bad right now. Wow I think this is my biggest onion right here. You can kind of see it next to my hand. That's like that's like a good size store-bought onion. Oh my goodness. If you were following me last year, you know I did not have very good luck with the onions and the garlic. And that was due to, to a variety of factors. But long story short, I am so excited to actually have like onion-sized onions in my garden this year. It's it's pretty great. So as we walk down along this walkway, I have to show you guys this massive kale plant. Like if you look at some of these bigger leaves. These are absolutely ginormous. Um, this is a kaleidoscope kale from the Experimental Farm Network. Um, and it does kind of look like <laughs> the groundhog might have chewed on them a bit. Um, and I just currently don't have a strategy for dealing with that. Um, I, I do have enough to share. Like obviously he got like one leaf and each one of these leaves is like more than enough for a salad for me. So I'm not too, too worried about it. I mean, if he was to eat the whole plant, that would be kind of sad. But it is also getting close to the end of this plant's life. I expect it'll go to seed pretty soon. And if not, it will get bitter anyway. And speaking of things being near the end of their life, the peas are finally producing like quite a bit, but they're also struggling with the heat. And, you know, I definitely planted them a little late so they haven't had a lot of time to grow up and be good producers for me. I've gotten like maybe one meal of peas off of these. And they are doing, like the fava beans, they're doing their job of fixing nitrogen in the soil and getting this area nice and ready for the next thing that's going to be planted here. Which I haven't decided if that's going to be squash on this trellis or that trellis yet. But both of them have peas, so in terms of nutrition it doesn't matter too, too much. And over here, radishes are looking pretty great. Um, down here is a an icicle radish. And then the rest of these are, I think, some sort of red radish that I planted. And they are probably going to go to seed any day now due to the heat. If we walk across to these ones over here, these ones are already starting to go to seed. You can see their little flower buds starting to come up. 
And these are gonna make some good sized seeds. <gasps> Ooh, look how pretty that flower is. Kind of stripey. As far as the lettuce in this area goes, I've been pulling from it to feed people. Um, the groundhog ate a bunch of this off. He actually even ate the flowering stalk off. So I'm not sure what this thing is gonna do, if it's gonna try and flower again or what. Um, and then I have this head of lettuce that needs to get harvested soon, I guess, before the groundhog gets to it. Um, and then past that, the eggplants have been planted in between here. And whatever's chewing on the peppers is also chewing on these. But I intentionally grew these out to be kind of large transplants so that they would be able to withstand a little bit of early pest pressure, which it seems like they will. The turnips are turning into their own little jungle, as I kind of assumed they would once they went to seed. You can see all of these pods. There's so many seeds here. Um, and these are technically edible. I tried putting them in a stir fry the other day and I found them to be actually kind of a little too tough to really be enjoyable for eating. Um, but I don't know, maybe they would be worth it to you if you were going to like steam them or do something else to make them really soft. Um, but me, I don't really care to. And I am trying to save these for seeds, which I will eventually make a video showing you guys how to do that. The beets are so close to opening their flowers. I'm really quite excited to see what they look like because I've never had beets go to flower before for me. So that's gonna be really fun. And then behind the beets over here are potatoes. These are purple fingerling potatoes. Um, and one, one golden potato here that sprouted. The rest of my potatoes didn't really come up, which is a little sad, but I'm happy to have these purple ones. And I can always do a second summer planting of potatoes later in the season because our season is so long here. Look, I turn around and there she is. Just hanging out. And I just walked over here and once again, here she is. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna look at this row right here. This is more garlic here. This is more about the size that I would expect for garlic. Um, hi baby. Like about like this is what I would expect. And there, and there she goes sitting on my plant. I didn't even, <laughs> oh man. I'm not even lying to you guys, and she's demonstrating for me perfectly. Um, so anyways, back to garlic. So this is about the size I would expect for garlic. That other garlic is just, I don't know, insanely big. I swear it's not elephant garlic. It is Dixon Soft Neck from the Experimental Farm Network. So somebody did take the time to uh, experiment with garlic, and they grew out this variety that then the site was able to offer as a, a thing to purchase for normal people um, and I just think stuff like that is really cool and obviously the results are always really interesting. Um, the, the kale also was from the Experimental Farm Network. Um, so I think, I think following stuff like that is cool and obviously the results are a little unpredictable but I don't know. I don't really care. I like seeing what happens when you try things. So my radishes over here have started going to seed and I wanted to show you guys just the beginnings of their pods. You can see already that these are just like a lot fatter than the turnip pods and they're going to be a bit more flavorful and tender as well. So in here I had planted more hot peppers and also in between the hot peppers I have planted zinnia starts which also are getting eaten up by whatever's around here eating stuff. Um, and so we'll see how those fare. But zinnias are pretty hard to kill, and if I need to, I can just plant some more from seed directly, and I'm sure they'll have plenty of time to come up and grow because they're quite vigorous here. Oh wow, look at some of these pods on the Brussels sprouts. There's not a lot of pods. I'm noticing a lot of dropped flowers, but the pods that are being made are um, quite long, and they're also skinny compared to the radish ones, but they're very similar to the turnip ones. And what's really interesting to me, so this one got eaten up and is still kind of trying to put on more flowers. And this one still hasn't gone to flower yet. And I think that that's wild. So now I have to wait for it to go to flower and collect seeds from it because that means that it'll be uh, 
more resistant to bolting overall, which is something that we want from our plants. So I can sort of selectively choose genetics as I go by choosing what plants I save my seeds from. Oh, before I move on, for those of you keeping up with the sidewalk clearing, I have a sidewalk now all the way up to the edge of my property and there's still a few weeds to pull out and some clearing to be done um, and you can see why the dirt collected so easily on this sidewalk um, it's really quite in bad shape but at least it is here now and it will be easier to keep all of this area weed free when i have this bit of concrete in between it and the rest of this hill over here all right let's take a look at the raised bed the cilantro is going crazy making all of these beautiful flowers. So delicate. Um, and very soon I'll be able to show you guys what it looks like as this goes from flower to coriander seed. And I'll be able to show you guys how to harvest those and dry them for spices in your kitchen, um, which is pretty exciting. Everything else in here is looking great. I planted a couple new things. This right here is fenugreek that I started from seed and then I have here, I think this is called Mexican tarragon. I got that as a start from the store. I have a tarragon recipe and I don't need a lot of it, but I thought it'd be cool to get one and plant it here and see how it does. And before I leave the raised bed, I wanted to show you guys some of these teeny tiny onions. You guys saw how great some of my other onions are doing and these ones are not doing great at all. And I think it's because the layer of mulch on top of them is wood chips and it's very, very thick. And onions like to grow right at the top of the soil and so they might be having trouble getting nutrients from this thick layer of wood chips and not really reaching down into the dirt underneath and i think this is a really good example of how like if you are gardening in a small space and you have one environment that you're growing in if you saw onions like this you might think that you were i don't know somehow failing as a gardener or maybe that your soil was bad or something and, uh, you know, if you don't have anything else to compare it to, like, why would you think any differently? But I'm here to show you that the same starts planted at the same time in different environments can yield very different results. And if you're seeing something like that, sometimes it is what you started with, but a lot of times it is just the amount of nutrition and the environment that you have provided to your plant. If you see something struggling, don't think I'm a bad gardener. Think, what can I do to make this a more ideal environment for that plant? Alrighty, lastly, a quick check-in on the berry patch. Still looks kind of bare from all the way up here, but the blueberry plants are looking great. They are just getting started. And actually my strawberry is started to put out its first runners, which I just have this one strawberry plant but I'm hoping over the seasons I will get many more strawberry plants. Um, and then I still haven't done anything about the dead raspberry over there. I think it might be time for me to break down and uh, buy a new one if I want the right number of raspberry plants in my patch. And I think I kind of do um, because what I could do is I could wait for the ones that are alive to grow up and then take cuttings from them and fill in that gap. But I really, really don't want to have a gap. <laughs> um, I want to have a nice looking kind of barrier there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and buy some more raspberry plants and kind of fill in that gap now before everything has really gotten too big around it. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost forgot to show you. I have this beautiful irises blooming in my garden. These are Dutch irises. I just got the bulbs from the store and they are lovely. There's even more getting ready to bloom here. Oh, I'm so excited. My mom always had irises in the front garden beds when I was growing up, so they are a bit nostalgic for me. And I don't think these are the exact kind she had, but I do plan on accumulating more irises over time. Something else interesting we should look at before I let you go is how the mushrooms that I planted in my garden are faring. And none of them have uh, fruited yet, but we can still check their progress by checking out the mycelial growth beneath the surface. So if I just pull back the wood chips here and look underneath, you can see all of that white stringy looking growth. That is mycelium and that is 
good sign that things are going as planned with the mushrooms that I planted in these wood chips. Alrighty guys, that is the end of the tour for today. As I said before, every Wednesday a new garden tour comes out and in between I am trying to make a lot of videos, especially helping out new gardeners this year and explaining all the basics. So if you are a new gardener, check out my gardening basics videos. And if you want to catch up on all the tours, I also have a playlist of every tour this year and in previous years in different playlists. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time I wish you happy gardening.